And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here. We have the living stack of comics, the Eye of Sauron, and the drunkest man in the room, good brother Doku. And we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprise, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xana. How are we doing tonight? I look forward to the day I bane your existence in person. Oh yeah, I'm sh I'm sure you're I'm sure you're just count I'm sure you're just counting down the minutes. <laughs> what are you talking about? With the Zadari spec, I'm counting down the picoseconds. <laughs> oh fuck you. <laughs> But, so some, so with this particular episode, and before, before, we, some of you may recall that a few months back we did a, we did a, or tried to do a magical shonen idea, although I'm not entirely how shonen our idea really was, in hindsight. Um, it kind, it kind of ended up being a, kind of ended up delving more into epic, into epic fantasy, and I think, I think, um, we were all, we were all stealing way too many notes from Sanderson. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. It no. just shows that, uh, you know, evolution of an idea. Yeah. Oh, but I just, but because, but I decided to bring back that, that whole thing. Because the whole building the equation thing, I think, is going to see some semi-regular use here in the, here in the watch. Um. But I decide. But for this one, I decided to go with a little, with a bit of a different spin because this week's it episode is building the equation, secret guardians, and Zan, since you, since you've had to explain it just as much as I have in the days leading up to this, I'd like you to give everyone a refresher as to what exactly this means because even Doku was confused for a second. Indeed. So, what we're talking about when we mean secret guardians are people or an organization who work behind the scenes of common society to fight threats that are not generally known to the general public. Uh, Western examples would include things like the Men in Black or the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense in Hellboy, Eastern examples would be things like the Makai Knights from Garo, the titular Demon Slayers from Demon Slayer, Soul Society from Bleach, and the Exorcists from D. Greyman. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, it's groups of people that are generally unassuming to common to the common public mm -hmm. who are protecting them from a threat much bigger than they know. Mm -hmm. And because now the now um obviously that get that gives us a lot of um a lot of, a, a wide a wide net to cast and we need and that needed to be narrowed down and while I while I didn't explore the whole system I did come up with a bit of a foundation for us to build around and once once again this involves this involves me delving into into my into my library and br and bringing back the game that br the game that brings weebs together <laughs> Anima. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> because the uh, an an idea ended up coming to me. What if we t what if we took the what if we took the um paths of the paths of magic from Anima and use that as and use that as our one of one of the keystones of our system. Now that is not to say that the, that these people that that we're do that we're doing a that we're doing a magic themed ap approach a approach again, because th because that's o because that's only the that's only the source. Now the reason of, now when it comes to using this setup, the reason I went with it is because you have a series of more traditional elements that are that are. Um, that are get, that are going to be a little bit more esoteric than the eight than the eight pillar foundation thing we did last time. Yeah. Plus, you already plus you have a perfectly inbuilt opposing faction right right out of it because of the way the because of the way the eleven paths um, 
work. Now, these more more importantly, each of them, each of the paths is each of the paths in Anima when it comes to magic is is um pa is paired off with another, and there are sub paths that are essentially specializations, which some paths can access and some can't. The they are they're further separated into the lower and higher, with the lower um, elements being fire, water, earth, air, darkness, and light. While the higher paths are um, creation, destruction, essence, and illusion, and the and the eleventh path is necromancy, which is opposed to all of them because necromancy is a perversion of how magic works. the The approach that it has in game is that if you develop, if you start developing in say the fire path, it's more expensive to develop in the water path. So you can, you can, and with necromancy, you develop in that, and it becomes harder to develop in everything else. Because <clears throat> once again, necromancy is a perversion of the natural order. So that provide that's one of the that's one of the foundations that we're using. The other is this is the is the idea that you can that you cannot utilize you cannot utilize um. Ma magic spontaneous you cannot utilize magic or magic like effects spontaneously it has to come through you it has to come through some sort of item a medium if you will mm -hmm. now does that medium have to have to be a weapon not necessarily it just ha it just has to come for it just has to come from something and that's it you're essentially you're essentially using a tool for it that's not to say that that the that's not to say that they have to be multi-purpose wands. In fact, in fact, I'd probably, in fact, I'd probably be against that idea because it's a little too obvious. <laughs> Is it too I obvious? It's kind of dumb. I'm getting some strong vibes from uh, Innocence from D. Gray Man. Well, we did, we did, we did put a picture of Alan Walker on the on the um, vis on the visual rep, so you're not too far off. Well, there we go. Now. The one of the one of the one of the um, uh, one of the other things that that we had that I had decided to go with as I as I was as I was as I was letting the image of the of this particular concept percolate in my mind is that magic is not ma magic is not too is not too far removed from an expression of art the same the same way that an art the same way that an artist will utilize pen and paper. If they're writing or a uh, or paint and canvas, if they're painting or whatnot, they're using that as a medium to express something that's in their head. Magic. Or they, or, go ahead. I was gonna say, or Daydara uses explosive clay. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> the point. The point is, is that the point is, is that is that the, is that ma is that. And instead, instead of using magic, I'm going. I'm going to refer to it as anima because it is essentially, the effects are essentially supposed to be expressions of their soul. Just cha just channeled through some kind of medium. You know, I know we said uh, SSSS Gridman was too far off, but that sounds a lot like Akane making kaiju. Yeah, but there's caveats with with uh, Gridman that would be better covered under another category. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying Gridman as a whole, it's just the specific carving kaiju and then animating them like as an expression of her soul like that that's Akane in a nutshell. Yeah, ex that is ex true. except you're forgetting one thing. She's not the one actually she's not the one br she's just she's just making models. The one who is actually putting the kaiju to life is is Alexis. Uh, Alexis. Yeah. No, you're no, yeah, you're right about that, but it, that's just the first thing that came to my head. Now, with the, with that kind of thing, with that kind of thing in my, in mind, um, first first off, we already we already have the we already have the system and how it, and how it works. It is essentially uh, is essentially that. And given that given that we have uh, we have anima as the means, um, would it should what? 
what how 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 should we have necromancy represented in this should it be a representation of of stagnation um hmm. well no because even stagnation and decay occur within nature mm -hmm. they're all a part of the natural order of things necromancy is a direct uh affront a reversion of what the natural order is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. In this case, I think a better representation would be um, almost I, I, the best way, I guess, would to say what what we would call Escher zones or Lovecraft zones or whatever you want to call them. Um, Let's go with Euclid's. Euclid's. Yeah, that works too. Uh, or, well, non-Euclidean physics. <laughs> um, but I was going to go with either I was going to go with either Euclid's or O parts. Those could O parts could also work too. Uh, out of place artifacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, for example, uh, the 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 almost like the way, and this is going to be a really weird example to bring up the way the furthest chunks in minecraft used to load what used to be called the end before the end was put into the game mm -hmm. where blocks spawn randomly in weird configurations and the place makes no fucking sense um that would be a hallmark of deep-rooted necromancy in an area where the natural laws have just been completely fucked with um would it be fair to say that it wouldn't be too far removed visually from a labyrinth in Madoka? Yeah, actually. Or, um, I'd say either that or... I'm gonna have to take a cold shower for referencing this. Limbo from, um, DMC. <laughs> I, I'll stick with the Madoka uh, reference. Yeah, um... The, and give... Given that, given that the the approach that I'd, I'd probably have it, here's the approach that I'm that I'm cons that I'm considering. Um, Euc Euclid's and O parts are one are one and the same. O parts are the O parts are the means for Euclid's to try and exert influence in the world, and at for it's it, they would for most people they'd be represented in in some place that just doesn't seem right. Like take take it take the um eerie feeling you get near a supposed haunted house and just di and just dial that up. Um, the feeling of 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 unnatural dread. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm seeing it. They can't they can't explain what they can't explain what is wrong with it. They just they just know that something is. Yes. Um, a a anima user. Is is someone who is someone who is able to is someone who is able to utilize that that partic the the partic that particular natural f natural force as as a canvas to contend against it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am go I am going with the idea that the big bads in the big bads when it comes to Euclid's are sen are essentially some sort of other dimensional um being. Not I'm not going I'm not going full Ilthid with it. But they, but they def they definitely look they definitely have the have these things where it looks where they look normal enough, but there are things that are just out of place. So some of the representations of um the the uh, the board of um the board of directors like in control. Yeah, and in incidentally, control control is, control is a game I like to look at, but not necessarily play. Gameplay's pretty pretty rote, but the uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. While the gameplay is pretty rote, the exploration is just fantastic. I oh, love it, that gameplay exploration. It fe it, it does fe it does feel when it it does feel like um I'm, I'm not I don't want to go too far off on a tangent, but control I think Racevic was on point when he said that control felt more honest. It felt more like a like a remedy project than Quantum Theory did. Yeah, which is why not, they tied in Alan Wake. Quantum Break. Yeah, 
Which is why they tied uh, Alan Wake into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. But give now with now with that with that kind of thing in mind, obviously a or obviously an organization of of anima of anima users, which because because of the fact that I'm tr I'm trying to draw allusions to art with this, I'd say I'd say that um the items that that an anima user would would um would utilize do you think do you think we should call it a can a um canvas mm. Mm. canvas i don't know i was uh, i was, think, I was thinking the, i was thinking either of canvas or some variation of instrument hmm Hmm. Can like canvas does give a a universal feel of artiste, but it also it's going to um it's going to limit just when people hear the word mm -hmm. what people are going to think of as acceptable tools. I think it's a little restrictive. Um, Why don't you call it something like a studio? Well, but then studios also imply some. Well, I mean, studio a... studio impl studio implies space um, and a place. I do. Um, I do have. I do have an. I do have an idea for 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 studio, but I, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna save that for a bit later. Okay, so where you're looking more for just the tool, like a oh, a broad brush term for the tool. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Incept In, uh, instead of inspiration, uh, a muse. Hmm. I'm I'm a little I'm a little bit more willing to go with that, especially since while the, while there are while you do have the muses from from antiquity, there's also the fact that what what can, what's considered a muse for people is um, subjective, very true. subjective. Ah, uh, true. Good point. Which oh. means that the tools can be just as subjective. Yeah. Now, one particular approach that that I'm that I'm going with is that th is that there are t there are two there are two. T now, bef before I get before I get into something I want I wanted to touch on when it comes to muses, something something else I do I do want to touch on is the name of people who are uh, who are anima users. I am I am considering calling them maestros. Hmm. I like that actually. Um Maestro sounds good. I I want to give me a second to check uh one other word that I had in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I would think Maestro would be a rank rather than just the general term. If if I was if, thinking more virtuoso, someone who is skilled, but not necessarily a master. They have an outstanding talent, mm -hmm. but a maestro could be considered one who has reached the pinnacle of their art. You know how you know how you know how there's in a lot of in a lot of these kind of fictions. There's always that. Elite group, whether it be, whether it be the in say Bleach the captains of the Gote Thirteen, or in or um the Hashira in Demon Slayer, etc. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that in this case the the um maestros are the, are that particular um class. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot more sense because everybody's a virtuoso of some sort. They have to be to be able to use their anima powers mm -hmm. effectively. Um, but it's the true masters of their art that get to be called maestro. Yeah. Given given that, I'd say that I'd say that with it now. First, given given that, um, what what sort of what sort of name would you would you get would you give that would you give this particular organization we're constructing? Mm. The symposium. 
All right. I mean, if you want to get even even more uh, technical, you could call it the Symposium of Life. Since, you know, we're facing down the, th the very thing that perverts life itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, when it comes to... We've already... We've already... Given that, given that we've established that, um, I think I think something else that we need to de that we need to delve into is is uh, is on the opposite end. We have we have the O parts, which are the which are the me which are the means to uh, to allow um, to allow you to allow um, Euclids to is to assert their influence. We have the Euclids themselves, which I think mm -hmm. I think. I think most Euclids would be would be equivalent to to monsters of the Ark or monsters of the week, depending on what depending on what we go with. Um, yeah. But when it comes to the but since we have we have maestros, I think it's important to have to have a to have a opposite. I mean, there's the there's the whole thing there's the whole thing with the with the um, moons in de in uh, Demon Slayer, for instance, um, and and there, and there's the there's the and there's the whole and we have similar f stuff with ble with bleach and and elsewhere. I think we need an equivalent. Mm. We have we have the Euclids as the general uh, the general types. Yeah. Um. Uh, what what would pervert art? Or what is perverse art? Hmm. Because the necromancers are still going to see their art as art. It's just True. not art that the rest of the world can accept. Transgressors. There's a, there's a whole debate. In, there's there's a whole debate in the art world for decades about the morality of transgressive art. I was I was gonna go for something a little more on the nose, but that works. <laughs> I was gonna say something along the lines of like the macabre. Or... I was gonna call them the Cronenbergs. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a little t that's a little too specific for what for what I'm going. With. I I know I know, but no 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 not the macabre the grotesques. A I, thing of dark a dark and hideous beauty. Um, I'm I'm going I'm going with I'm going. I'm going with gr I'm going with gressors, just a shortened version of transgressors, because they because they are because um, transgressive art ha can can mean can mean a lot more different can has a lot more variety of things, whereas macabre or gr or grotesque is a little bit more specific. True, understandable. Wasn't there a villain in something called the Gress? That sounds really familiar. Either way, it works. I like it. Now, give. Now, given given that given that we've um, we have so so far we have so far we have it that whenever that the that um whenever whenever there's some whenever there's some sort of wrongness in in an area that in, that um that in that intensifies with time that is that is a that is a Euclid event. Um, a Euclid's trying to trying to exert their influence and essentially trying to worm its way into the into reality. Um, usually on the orders of so, of someone higher on someone higher up, which would be the Gressers. Given given that given that um, we we also ha we have this we have these kind of things opposed by the Symposium of Life. Or the or or just the symposium for short, who Indeed. who utilize a a who utilize a method of of bringing of essentially of essentially mystical art, known as, known as anima. Those people are referred to as virtuosos. Um, remind me what did what did we what did we decide as far as the name of the names of the items that they utilize? I don't think we came to a final decision on that one. Actually, I was I was leaning towards instrument. Then we then we got a bit um, sidetracked. Mm. I mean, instrument works because you can you can call a blade 
or wait a minute, I I do remember we did nail this down. It was Muse. Oh yeah, that's true. Because... This is my Muse. Yeah, I can imagine one of them saying it. And the th the thing now, when it comes to when it comes to Muses. I don't. I don't. I don't want to have it. I don't. I don't want to have the idea that it has to be. It has to be a sword, or it has to be a. It has to be a gun. If, if I were writing this in RPG form, the if someone said that their mu that their that the muse that they bring is a sword, the fir the question that I would I immediately ask them is, why? Oh, because for what reason does it manifest as a sword? Yeah. Or. Well, the 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 approach that the approach that I'm going with is that the is that the muses are are physical objects. Yeah. The the effect the effects are are the is is where the is where the anima part of the equation com comes from. Um, mm -hmm. and, My muse is a plastic grocery bag. Um. A. A. Um. Now, if someone were if someone were to pick a, if someone were to pick say, in the instead of instead of a sword, let's say let's say that they have a let let's say in the, in one case they could have a letter opener that transforms and that transforms into a sword. Um, that's that's just that's just one that's just one that's just one possibility. Um, and get and um. Of course, and of course, it's not like it's not like these things. It's not like people using these are one are one trick ponies, because that brings us into the whole paths thing that we talked about beforehand. Yes. Now, um. Necrom necromancy. We'll, we'll we're going to be covering that last, but I I want to talk I want to talk about the paths. And first off, should we should we call them paths, or I'm I'm thinking of using um spheres instead. I was thinking about going on, going full t full tilt into the uh, into the art world thing and saying colors. Let me make a counter offer. Hue. Hues also works. Yes. He'll rest forever with his three year old crying about them putting uh, dirt on his coffin. Moving on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. So I'd I'd like to I'd like to I'd like to go I'd like to go down the el the um element list and and get your guys's input as to as to what each should represent. So let's start with let's start with let's start with obvious fire. Now, by represent, mm. what are we talking about here? Um, in ter in terms of in terms of what's if some if someone ha if someone has fire as one as one of their hues, um, what are they potentially using for for not just not just for combat but also for utility? And obvi obviously, the lower elements are going to be easier, but the the higher elements are going to be tri are going to be trickier. So we want their powers then in this case, or do we want their muses? Um let's go let's let's go with let's go with um let's go with the let's go with the latter and then and then the former. Okay, so the muse is first. Mm hmm Hmm. I see someone with a fire muse or a fire hue uh using a mu a muse that hmm. I'm going to I'm going to step this up into modern day society. I'm going to say that they're using LEDs as one muse for sparks of inspiration. Yep. I I I can go with that. Um Ne um a statue made of flint. Yeah. Or a trinket, a flint trinket. Mm -hmm. And uh Obviously, obviously, something like a, something like a lighter is is fairly is fairly obvious when it when it comes yeah. to this kind of thing. I wanted to avoid the fruit that was already on the ground and fermenting, monk. Mm -hmm. 
Um, here's a good one. How about a magnesium rod? Can you, uh, like you... the, the small magnesium rods you get in survival kits? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Yeah. Um, a light bulb filament could actually work. Yeah. Tungsten, yeah, tungsten light bulb filament especially. Mm -hmm. um, next, water. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, avoiding fermenting fruit. Uh, hmm. What if some? What if somebody who? What if somebody's um, muse was was was? Uh, I have. Here's a here's a dumb idea I have for I have for an idea. Somebody who somebody who carries around the who carries around those um ice packs that we had to use as ki use as kids and throws them around like like um frost grenades. <laughs> here's here's one for you that may not seem relevant. A rain stick. Yeah, I I can go I can go with that. Sound sound based sound based uh Sound based water attacks. How does that work? <laughs> it, it's not quite fermenting, but it's low hanging fruit, it would be river stones. Mm -hmm. But the, a the, stack of skipping stones to use as shuriken? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the The point with all of these is that is that it's it ha is even 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 so, even even something is even even something as mundane as say a deck of playing cards that ha that have um. That have Rorschach ink blots on them would still qualify. Yeah, I could see that. Oh. And regarding ink, you could actually have an ink stone from any ancient inking ritual, mm -hmm. whether it's Eastern Asian or otherwise. Yeah. In f in fact, there. In fact, I am kind of go. I am kind of going for an Asian inspired approach with with this kind of thing because if you look at, if you if you look at say um. Da um, Taoist Taoist priests in in a lot of different f forms of um, fiction, or Onmyunji in Japan, the casting is more is more about pu is more about putting power into objects. Yeah. Issue number one of Azure Lane. <sighs> <sighs> I I have I have not touched anything regarding as uh, regarding Azure Lane, so I'm going to defer to you on that. Eh, don't. It's just avoid it. It's a waste of time. It's amusing if you have nothing, and literally, I mean, nothing better to do. Yeah. I'm going to make the I'm going to make the point here, monk, that Azur Lane is a uh, is another ship girl thing. Yeah, it's don't this don't. <laughs> the closest I haven't touched it, but the closest thing that the closest thing that I'm aware about it is um is somebody sent somebody gifting me a copy of Crosswave. Yeah, well, that. Yeah, that's about all you need to know, really. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, Earth is the ne is the next one. Uh, I'll I'll go for low hanging fruit here only because um, colored, colored, not even colored gemstones, but colored glass cut to look like gemstones would work for this. Um, although the gemstones themselves would be better, only because. Uh, you could do different effects based on the gemstone you're using. Why am I like, why am I thinking of Rin? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I could throw a topaz and it would suddenly be a flash bomb or anything. No, that would never happen. Well, it's only remember golden rule. <laughs> but you know low hanging fruit there um mm -hmm. other things that earth muses could be i mean a whittling a knife a, a, a whittling knife I can whittling see knife mm -hmm. um, see that a natural lodestone yeah a shovel yeah but now you're now you've just become shovel knight good job uh, uh let's um actually i i wasn't i wasn't even gonna go with i wasn't even gonna go with sho with shovel knight i was gonna go with zombie with an x <laughs> i was gonna i was bring i was bringing up fucking dirge <laughs> can of coke to whoever whoever is old enough to remember that <laughs> um hi 
but I don't drink Coke, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Earth can just Earth doesn't necessarily have to be have to be um stone. And next is next might be a bit trick a bit of a tricky one. Um, air. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of someone who who throws about wind chimes. Wind chimes works. Mm. Um, pinwheels. Mm -hmm. Um, a and then fan. <laughs> pocket fan. <laughs> Any folding fan works, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I've got one for you here. Uh, very old wuxia and shensha uh weapon. Wind fire and something... wheels. Horsetail whisk. Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> See now, now we're picking the prime fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a flute. Um, flute, flute would work, yeah. but I mean any, that's any that's kind of instrument. It is on point. It's on the nose, and it's pretty on the nose. There's un, there's uncountable numbers of of instruments that that. No, nope, nope. that... there's one last one I have for mm -hmm. for you, especially monk bellows. I hate that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Which part? That you love dwarves or that you're full of hot air? <laughs> you know, I'm just in a, in a month from now. I'm just I'm just thinking how long how long is it gonna take before before I end up before I end up singing the singing the song of every Atlas pilot. <laughs> oh, I'm about to whip somebody's ass. <laughs> <sighs> we'll see. Um, next is light. Okay, let's get the low hanging fruit out. Flashlights and mirrors. Mm -hmm. Uh technically filament works for this one too. Yep. Um. Well, no, I'd say the whole light bulb does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe you can, maybe you can do a full Adams family and be able to be able to light up a light bulb by just putting it in your mouth. Um, I didn't know your name was Uncle Fester. No, I've got too much hair. Um, and your uh, complexion doesn't match. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there, there's there's the, there's there's certainly those. Um, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say the um, I'd say the light, I'd say the light sticks that are in survival kits. That, you know the ones, you know the ones that you just cr that you crack, can, mm -hmm. can certainly work. Even some prisms. As, yeah, even as some even something as mundane as glow as glow in the dark stickers. I could see somebody <laughs> using that as their muse to make traps. Or you know, suddenly activated armor. Mm -hmm. They have the stickers on the. It just looks like stickers on their jacket, man. Hell, um, 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 no. World ends with you. Got away with all the powers being tied to pins. So why not? And we're getting Neo. The world ends with who? I yeah. love it. So and one I. of the party, one of the party members in that is Sho Minami Minami Moto. Which means, which means, which means, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to bring back the Zeta drinking game. Except I'm not because if I took a shot every time he said Zeta, I'd be dead. Oh no, no, he's using Yakta now. You're no longer so Zeta slow. <laughs> uh, I really, really wish I wasn't taking a break from drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it is only yourself to blame. But yeah. uh one one last thing I think would be uh actually rather interesting um is Anything that is, uh, I forget the, the term, it's a specific type of luminescence. It's not bioluminescent. We've already kind of covered that. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Uh, Are you talking about like the crystals that give off light? Uh, no. There's a... Chemiluminescence, which is essentially, uh, it's a specific type, of, or is it? No, it's triboluminescence. Excuse me. Uh, it's when you create light through frictional interaction between materials. 
because there's ways that you can crush certain chemical uh certain liquid chemicals with uh some solid uh chemicals together to make them create light mm -hmm. so and anything that is triboluminescent would be really cool to see how they would use that as a uh as a muse mm -hmm. um <clears throat> Now the last one might be a little bit tr might be a little bit tricky, but um, darkness, or at least the last one of the lesser hues. Um, that one is a little tricky muse wise, but um, Do you really want to go low hanging fruit because I just say a blindfold. When a blindfold would work, uh, I was. I was going to go um, for one that's a very specific example, Vanta Black. Mm -hmm. That that mm -hmm. could work. Um, some obviously some sort of obviously some sort of black light can can um, fit. Um, a redacting pen. Yeah, red a red a redacting pen. I um, I wouldn't be surprised if some if somebody you. If somebody used um, white, if somebody used white out to represent it, a parasol. Mm -hmm. that Para work. Parasol, um, sun um, sunglasses. Any sort of shutter or shade, mm -hmm. or the combination, the uh, altogether tacky shutter shades. Yeah. <laughs> um. You, know, you know the you know those you know those big you know those big um uh, those big umbrellas that are that are used for say pa for say patio tables. I always I've always had this vi I've always had this visualization of some of someone you of someone using that as a, as a uh, melee weapon. I don't know why. I've actually seen that happen at a bar before. <laughs> Now, so, someone swinging that around as if it's an as if it's an over as if it's an oversized tetsubo or a or a um e or even a improvised spear. Yep, I have, I have seen that before. Um, and obvious obviously more traditional more traditional melee and ranged weapons could count could count as could count as could count as muses, but. You're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to walk around with those kind of things in in public. <laughs> um, I mean, depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. If it's a uh, if it's the state of Texas, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> and isn't it isn't it the case where where um um dueling is legal? <laughs> I uh, I would have to check again. I don't know. I do. I, I do, do know. However, I can open carry both a sword and a gun now. So, uh, look out for my Dante cosplay using live <laughs> ammo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a joke. Please, don't demonetize Monk because of my jokes. They can't demonetize me. I never. I never monetized my channel. I know. That's the joke. <laughs> um, now the greater hues. Those. These ones are going to be. A, these ones are going to be a little bit trickier. Um. First is creation. Well, I'm going to go all the way back to my uh, comments earlier. Date Dara's mo explosive modeling clay. Yes, okay. I'm literally talking about somebody using C4 plastique for a for their muse with creation. As much as it's going to be as... a, a, hard to get a hold of, though. Mm -hmm. Um, I do hourglass. A what? An hourglass. For creation? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Um, I'd like to know your, uh, your, your specific um, rationale for that. Because time is the essence of creation. On the flip side, this could also work for necromancy. So... You want to talk about one of the maestros flipping to the dark side? Hourglass also works. Did oh. did he just say necromancy for necromancy? No. Yes, he did. Did I? <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. 
man, you without 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 liquor. I know. Uh, I know. You're it's flailing. Just... You're drowning, bro. Again, see, it's the hourglass is flipped upside down. I'm moving in reverse. It's a perversion. <laughs> okay, I can obliquely see the rationale for Nick for 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 uh, creation being hourglass. I think a hourglass running in reverse would work a lot better for necromancy. Um, Again, you could use them for both, so... Fountain pen. For low-hanging fruit mm. creation. Mm -hmm. Or paintbrush. Yeah, for... These are these are traditional instruments of, uh, of artistry now, at this point. <laughs> a conductor's baton. Yeah. Only sli slightly step up. Because you're you're conducting the creation of music there, so if you wanted to do something extremely obnoxious, a particle accelerator. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me why. Yes, because someone can carry around one of those. You never know. Mm -hmm. I... Or you could just have an access card, <laughs> an access card to the large hadron collider. Just the card. Uh, a, a, and it doesn't even have to be an active access card. It's like a, it's like an access card they gave after it was it was deep debriefed to decommissioned. Here you can have I this said, kid. It's taking, it's taking the piss, but it'd be damn funny. Well, the, well, um, Doctor Who had the whole psychic paper thing that that always looked like whatever ID that he needed. Only because he was thinking of it that way, though. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So. There's at there's at least some there's at least something of a precedent. Yep. And depending on what kind of software you had on a smartphone, if we're going modern day, like that would be a really unassuming one. Mm -hmm. A graphing a, gra a graphing program on your on your smartphone, yeah. <laughs> a TI eighty three with a with a, <laughs> one of the <laughs> has has Mario on it still. <laughs> It'll, no. It would work. Now we're just in the fucking weeds. Let's continue. Yeah. Um, okay. Destruction. <laughs> um, let me let me get let me get the obvious out of the way. A stick of trimantial tutine. <laughs> I nitrotoline. I don't know. TNT. I know dynamite. Mm -hmm. um, Dynamite. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd I'd say um. I'm gonna. Amber. I'm gonna. Uh, hey. <laughs> I'd say some hey. kind, some kind of some kind of item that's really rusted and cor and corroded. Um. So he he just took my idea. Mm -hmm. I was a gonna say hammer, hammer. too. <laughs> a I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. One better. A flask of aqua regia. Ooh. You know, Whoa. the acidic compound that can melt gold. And I can I can go with that. Obviously obviously the um the when I think when I think of what when I think of what the destruction sphere would, would be would be like in the, or destruction hue would be like in this case, the thing that the th some people would some people would think that in that um that any sort of attack magic would counter to that, but what I'm go what I'm going with is is less of that kind of thing and more of um scar. It disassembles at the at the molecular level, yeah. Yeah. Um in which case we can then immediately uh pull up fungi, bacteria. Mm hmm You could use those as muses for the destruction hue. Yeah. Specifically specifically fungi, I want a mushroom answer. I just want a mushroom mixer. I'm going to make them consume you. You will feel every inch of it. Goodbye. <laughs> um. Now the now um. The next one is essence, and I I will note that um when Carlos was regularly on the Anima forums, he compared essence to um FMA style alchemy. Essence is is the is essentially 
tra essentially transform transforming transforming one thing physically or spiritually to another thing. You know, it might be better for us to think of essence muses by getting its opposite sphere for contrast. The opposite sphere of essence is illusion. So the truth of a thing versus uh, the seeming of a thing. The, tr the truth versus the lie. Yes. Although the, all the best lies have a bit of truth in them. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if, we're, if we're going down that route, I, th I think the approach to that I could see someone saying is an eh, a, 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 a essence a essence muse manipula a essence muse manipulates tr um, manipulates truth a illusion muse manipulates lies I think that pigeonholes it a bit much though um yeah that, that's why I could see someone who doesn't have all the facts saying it but illu but illusion does not necessarily ha have to cover um have to cover say up have to cover the optical approach. Yes. Um, yes. It could. Um, it could cover sense. It could cover sounds. Any any of the senses. It could. It could cover. Um. It could cover. It could cover perceptions in more indirect ways. It could cover. Um. Some someone. Someone believing that they have a that they have a skill or know something that they actually don't. Well, here's here's a good one that I don't think many people would think of as an essence muse. A dumbbell. Hmm. It is an item you use to transform yourself. It's a slow, arduous process, but you still transform yourself. Now I have the now I have the image of some of somebody use somebody using a somebody using weight a somebody using deadlift equipment as a um a spe a um a spear not 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 a spear a <laughs> a, sta a really heavy quarter staff. <laughs> You thought the hammer was bad. Uh, I, I was thinking of uh, someone using those um, those those spring-loaded resistance suits used for constant training that you see in you know old uh, kung fu films and stuff mm -hmm. as a, as a suit of armor that changes them into something either nearly indestructible or whatnot using the, their essence hue. Yeah. See, when you were describing essence versus illusion, for some reason I keep getting this image of a magician, a magician's assistant carrying a fucking physics textbook. <laughs> um, in holy crap, there's a frog on the window. Oh, you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think the frog. For... <laughs> I think the frogs all fried today. We were over a hundred degrees. I would say with I would say is that before or after humidity, but I think at that temperature it doesn't matter. Yeah, probably not. Hmm. Truth, truth, truth. Essence, 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 uh, essence, and illusion are probably going to be the hardest one to bring muses up for. Um, uh, what about a spyglass or a microscope? Actually, well, those... actually, I've I've got I've got an even I've got something even be something even better and something ju and something even stupider. Go for it. A decoder ring. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Am I wrong? Not wrong. No. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> no, but that that means any 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 measure of a uh, of cryptography and cryptology. Uh, and any any cryptographic uh, paraphernalia would work here. Then a fucking any... Sudoku puzzle. No, not Sudokus. Um, cipher cipher squares. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. the pig pen cipher specifically. <laughs> uh, you you could have somebody you could have somebody writing writing there. It you could have somebody um. Imagine someone ca casting casting spells by reciting by reciting the spell name in Morse code. Oh. Or, or um, someone casting a spell uh, using pig Latin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> using pig Latin for their anima. Yeah. I'm, 
I'm I'm an essence user. My essence is my hue. What's your muse? This book of pig Latin. <laughs> um, we're we're getting ridiculous at this point. Now there's two. Now there's there's a couple uh, there's a couple avenues in in Anima's uh, magic system that I that I wanted to see see if we could adapt see if we could adapt. The fir the first of the first of these is the is the is the meta magic system also, or as it's known in the book the arcana sephira oh gosh um should we should we utilize that 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 particular thing of people doing as a side grade system or should we have side grades relegated to um sub paths um i was thinking sub paths for more specialties like a focus rather than a, a side grade. Yeah, I can, I, I can go with that. I, I will admit that one of the that um one of the analogs that that comes to mind with um with how we'd probably do how we'd probably do um um sub um sub paths or or in this case in this case I in this case I pro I probably I probably would call would call these colors. Would call our would call our our sub paths colors. Um, I'd say it, I'd say it would be some somewhat an, somewhat analogous to the el, to the elemental release jutsus in Naruto. I'm a spit fireballs at you. Um. And, and I, if you manage to catch some of those frames when he's about to spit fireballs at the Phoenix Fire Jutsu, they are ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just felt that that needed saying. <laughs> yeah. But that that's 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 what that's one that's um that's one that's one that's one approach that can, that can be done. Um, the the set. Of, now the set the um when it comes when it comes to these sub paths try, I am when it comes to these colors I am not this is one this is one of those things where I d where I feel I feel like trying to list all of them would be extremely redundant um in large in large there are there are a ha there are a handful there are a handful that that were in Arcana X set that that can be gone over but ri but really. Um, if, actually, actually, now that I think about, it, let's with some some of these some of these would be a little bit more would be a little bit more obtuse than others. Like say, chaos <laughs> would be would be what? How the hell would we figure out a, would we figure out a muse for chaos? Um, and is is chaos a subpath? Yeah, chaos is chaos is a subpath. I've got the book in front of me right now. Subpath of what? Um, the way the way that these subpaths are are set up, the the um ca the the um it doesn't it doesn't li the um it doesn't li it's not that they're it's not that they're subpaths of one particular one. It's just there are there are some that there are some that can take it, and there's a short list that can't. Um, for instance. Let me let me grab let me look that thing up. So so which which hues can subpath into chaos? I guess is the best tra uh, question oh. then. Now the one the ones that ca the ones that can't is for chaos in the book are illusion, essence, fire, earth, and water. But I don't I didn't the reason why I didn't go with that is I didn't see a reason to to um have those specifically. I'm um kind of hand waving it to saying that to saying that the colors are character specific. So so Okay. It's I'd say I'd say I'd say it's if some if someone were to put if someone were to put this in part of a seasonal arc, the tra the training stage for for um ca for the training sequence when it comes to ca when it comes to chaos is essentially the line between someone understanding how how to draw and someone developing their own style of of drawing if that makes sense yeah they've gone they've gone from just following the 
general motions to finding their own inspirations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, a muse for chaos. Uh, that is an interesting dice challenge, but I think that since it stems from the character's original muse, we don't need to think of a muse for chaos. Yeah. You know, it's just going to be um, an existing... It's going to be a modification to their hue, but they're still going to express everything through the muse they've all they've always expressed things through. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe they may end up building a new a new a new um, muse. And speaking of that, I had considered having there being two tiers of of um, muses. There's the there's the ones that people are able to are able to make, which is which is a relatively simple task. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of characters would end up making their muse um, subconsciously and then and then refine and then refining it. Like say mm -hmm. say some say somebody accidentally thro throws a fireball when they happen to be holding a lighter, and then as they as they understand the power that they have, they they um they get a they instead of utilizing a a cheap a cheap lighter, they get one of those fancy Zippo ones that you'd that you'd that you'd find in, that um you have to specially order. Mm -hmm. Um. And the and the the um a pro but I'm also considering that there that there were that there were so that there were some that are that are considered lost ones i.e. if i.e. this might this might be a bit of a stretch but i'd li but i like it i liken them to the to the difference between between um between shard blades and honor blades in um the stormlight archive mhm mm or as or as be, due to the fact that on nope that honor blades don't necessarily have to have a doesn't necessarily have to have a bond with a um, spren in order to utilize surge binding. Yeah. Um. This is this is me. This is me greatly summarizing the matter, and I'll just put in the short version. People, go read the Stormlight Archive or listen to it through graphic audio. You'll thank me later. Um. Especially, especially, especially since I, especially since um, shard blades are really fucking cool. I guess. Yeah. Sanderson, wa Sanderson wanted an equivalent to the lightsaber when it comes to cool factor and mission accomplished. Though I still have more interest in the shard armor. Which is which is completely understandable, but rails. Um. Indeed. <laughs> now. A lot now with a lot of with now ever se ever since ever since the, ever since the days of DBZ, there has always there has always been some tradition of up of upgrade form systems in a lot of shonen. Some t whether it w whether it be whether it be the whole Shikai and and Bankai in Bleach. Or um or just for or the or the form or the innocence transformations in say D Grayman, um <laughs> or or the or um le or learning new breathing techniques in Demon Slayer, even if one was tech even if one was technically known just just not applied the right way, that be that being the that being the dance of the fire god. Um. So I so in ke in keeping with the motif that we've had with building the equation, I do think we need some ki some kind of equivalent of some sort of upgraded state. Mm. Um, and given the fact that we're dealing with artists enjoying the feeling of art in some way, and we've made a lot of allusions to art throughout this. I'm think I'm thinking the term we should use is euphoria. Euphoria could work, yeah. Just some just someone who's able to fully Im fully immerse themselves in the in the act of creating art. Yeah. 
Um, and in incidentally, it wouldn't be the first time an anime used euphoria as a term because anybody remember Speed Grapher? Yep. Why do you make me feel old like this, Monk? What don't you? What didn't you? Didn't you have girls on film as an ear as an earworm? <laughs> <sighs> Also, also, I, also, I, I, um, I did, I did it, I did at one point, you, I did at one point use, um, I did at one point use the protagonist from Speed Graffer in a get in a gag, so, I, so I could go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my kids that th that this was Kiri, that this was Shiro's father. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I, because I felt like fucking with Fate fans that night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it didn't. It didn't help that I did this the same not the same night as it was announced that he, that um that Heaven's Feel was going to get delayed because I will not leave a single wound unsalted. I'll even use lemon juice if I have to. Don't give me that look, Zan. I I don't. I can't even see your face, and I already know you're giving me giving me that look. You'd do the exact same thing if you were in my position. It's not that I wouldn't do the exact same thing. It's that I don't think you went far enough. But is this is this like is this like how you don't try and hit a man while he's down? You try and kick him because that's easier. Yeah, exactly. But now given that we already have we already have a general idea but what sh but um if someone un if someone unlocks their euphoria what should that necessarily entail um first if they're going to unlock their euphoria uh their muse needs to become external as in more than just the tool mm mhm Sort of like um, establishing a, 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 a domain expansion in Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, it, it, it would it would be like any of the symp any of the uh, symphonium uh, putting down an anti labyrinth of sorts. I, I so there. They're in one of the Euclid zones. Um, you know, they're fighting the Euclid and its terrible effects upon nature itself. Someone uses their euphoria. It's going to establish a zone where the natural laws are reapplied. Would you say, would you say that it's not too far removed from a reality marble? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, uh, by the bone of my sword. <laughs> sure, we can say it's a reality marble in that respect. A l something that a lot of people tend to forget when it comes to unlimited blade works is that it, it is that it is a um, is that it is that that kind of reality that kind of reality marble effect is ascent is essentially giving him the ultimate is a space where he is given the ultimate means to create what to do the to do the furthest expression of his um tra of his tracing abilities yeah and that's exactly what a euphoria should be yeah it it, it it'd be not just a zone that you know powers them up powers down the euclid reestablishes the natural laws but then of course because it is a euphoria specific to the person using it it's going to help their ultimate expression of art. I would say in that I would say in that regard they'd prop the la the apparent landscape the apparent landscape um would change. So so um much like how much like how lands are used to generate mana in magic, if so someone whose whose muse has a fire hue would probably um would pro would probably would probably ge would probably generate a a um exploding a exploding volcano in the background complete with the red lightning that you might see in um certain volca certain volcanoes in um in Iceland that or uh you could be transported directly into the caldera of an underground lava cavern mm -hmm. or um for anyone who's a Star Wars fan you could just 
Well, you're, you're thinking of Mustafar. Yes, I know. <laughs> For anyone who's a Star Wars fan, you could just manifest Mustafar and then immediately Anakin your enemy. <laughs> Look, say what you will about the prequels, but no one's going to deny the the epicness of Duel of the Fates or the, or that particular um, fight scene. Oh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> but and of, <laughs> of course, of course, do, of course, doing it in doing it in water, you can do the wuxia thing of 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 walking of doing a doing a fight while standing on water. Um, or uh. Or if uh, if you want a real wuxia one that's gonna be fun, uh, it'd actually be air, because then you can stand amongst golden clouds and jump from raindrop to raindrop. Yeah. <laughs> but in the long graceful movements. But the the point the point is a I see a euphoria as as essentially applying applying the for mo the mu a muse is used to ch a muse is used to chant to channel the to channel the effects whereas a euphoria the environment itself becomes the muse yeah and and, and, and definitely like i said the muse has to externalize mm -hmm. um in that respect uh i i'm i'm going to i'm go you're going to hate me for this muse and euphoria combo because we didn't discuss illusion for muses earlier <clears throat> A uh, red honking clown nose, and then the Euphoria is a uh, funhouse um, lane of mirrors, specifically for <laughs> illusion. I'm perfectly, I'm perfectly fine with that. In fact, I, when it comes to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go, th I'm going to go through the other, um, the other hues, and I'd like, I'd like you to, I'd like you to give me your idea on, on, on what, on what a Euphoria of these might look like. Not what all of them would be, but just, but just one, but just, um, just one, just one of them. Um, okay. So, uh, but, but before that, my, uh, my, my ultimate, my ultimate, um, illusion hue user is now Pennywise the clown and you cannot take it out of my head. <laughs> Good guy Pennywise would be the stuff of nightmares. And it's he would still an illusion. And he would it is still not the truth. And he would... The idea, given how, how give, given how we, give, given certain other characters, the idea of it, the idea of good guy Pennywise as a vert, as the vert, as the maestro who nobody likes talk, who nobody likes um, dealing with because he's always a pain, is um, is cer is certainly appropriate, and he'd probably have the, he'd probably have chaos as his color. Yeah, and he would, he would, he would, uh, it would specifically be Tim Curry Pennywise because fuck you, that I said so, that's why. <laughs> um, it would also, also be useful for, for running gag, for, um, the a running gag kind of, kind of relief character who actually can be serious. Yeah. Um, although, although, um, given, I may, I may run, I may run this by the Broken Tales team, but, um, I'd be I'd be curious what the what the idea of a good guy Pennywise would look like. I keep I keep thinking of the um of the boogeyman in um Discworld. Yeah. Where he um he's he tr he he's tr he tries to be the he tries to be the um pr the def the protect the protector of children's dreams. Mm -hmm. It's ju it's just that it's just that um oh, it's just that older people look look at him and because of the clown appearance they te they tend to get sk they tend to f they tend to get unnerved. You know, it's a nice little it's a nice little reversion of of that of that kind of thing. Plus, you can there's a whole gold mine you can make out of that of 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 how adults look at of how adults look at childhood. Mm hmm. It'd also be a good way for me to for me to make one for me to make one giant middle finger towards all, towards all, towards certain um pundits, let's say. You know, the, you know the people who are like, "Oh, your oh, your ch your childhood was so offensive. Let me tell let me tell you how to be not offensive." Kind of people. Be a nice be a nice way to give to give a giant to give a giant fuck you to those to those kind of folk. Exactly. 
Plus, um, it also helps me reference one of the um, better subplots themat thematically in um, Nadesco. Mm -hmm. The that little that little um one that little one off story involving Omoe Kane. Yep. The AI and, for the ship for anyone else who hasn't for for all of you out there who haven't seen Nadesco, Omoe Kane is the AI for the ship the Nadesco. And why and why um even and why Akito was probably was the only person who was properly suited to actually ha to actually handle the task. Mm hmm. Um. And and gr gr granted, 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 sub granted, a lot of that was just so they could, just so they could let him geek out about Geki Ganger because we because um, we can't have enough of that. <laughs> no, um, we can't. Um. Rails, though, monk. We yeah. were going to go back to Euphoria's. So we can We can We've already. We've already touched upon what a fire Euphoria would look like, but and a water one. So, what about a Earth Euphoria? Um, that one I actually think would depend on the user and what their muse is. Uh, the two most likely, again, depending on user and muse, either it's going to be, um, a very overgrown semi fantasy thicket wood mm -hmm. or uh the deepest veins of ore and crystal in the earth could e could even be something could even be something more akin to the to the grand canyon that too yeah mm -hmm. and i don't mean i don't mean to imply that within that within these kind of euphorias they're they're um element bending because that's that's a bit of a reductionist interpretation of what of what a euphoria um, could do. What yeah. it is what is this? A euphoria is essentially giving giving them a com a complete mastery of of a particular um, of a particular hue and hue and or color combination within that within that given area. Yes, and uh, addi additionally. The changes so that the uh, of the euphoria field are not a manifestation of what their euphoria power may do. It's just an a, an indication of the natural laws being placed in the in the area they're at, mm -hmm. and then colored, literally in this case, by their hue. Uh, so it, it's much like. I'm gonna hate this uh, reference. Field spells in the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. It just shows the field as thematically with the card, but then mm -hmm. j the effect is not necessarily tied to the iconography. Yeah. Um, air. I think we already covered when you made the when you made the joke about jumping between clouds. Um, yeah. But it, I'd also I'd also I could also see a air being. Um, in the in the eye, in the eye of a tornado or the eye of a um hur the eye of a hurricane or on a tall cliff edge mm -hmm. um light um i could i could see i could see that i could see that one be i could see that one being say I think I think the I think the st the stage in the stage in a th in a theater or, or an opera would would apply for that. So uh Domus Aurea then got it. Thank you Nero. Um <clears throat> Thank you Miss Umu. Umu, yes. Miss Miss making Arthuria feel very very inadequate. Um. <laughs> um. Or, or uh, it could be a natural cave as a sunrise comes through a hole in the ceiling to fill the cave with sunlight. That that can certainly work. And next, it, the the ne the last of the less of the lesser hues would be darkness. Hmm. An oil field. I'd say, I could I'd see say, an oil field. Um, what about what about what about a 
What about a fo a fog rolling in? Fog rolling in could do it as well. Oh. Um. Or we there there's of course there's of course the class the classic approach of of the of of some place in the wilderness with the with the moon hanging in the sky. Mm hmm. Um. Here's here's a here's a good one that actually would really could really serve to unnerve people. An empty office building late at night. <laughs> I'd I'd. I'd say I'd say I'd say that I could say that that could certainly work. And how many how many times have we had the gag of of um so, of somebody being complete completely calm and and doing their and doing their everyday thing while a fight's in the background? Yeah, yeah. Hell, Spider <laughs> Spider Man Two got away with it. Um, tech technically, uh, we've done that with a lot of different movies. Mm-hmm. I just bring I just bring up that one because you have st yeah that's how they got that's how they got away with their Stanley cameo. Yep. Having him with having him with headphones while there's a fight while there while the rest of the place is getting trashed. Um Yep. There is the there is the whole thing with the bouncy ball from hell in the first men in black and when it gets to Zed's office he is just completely nonplussed. I remember. Um Now with with the greater hues, this is this is going to be a bit tricky, and this is and I'd I'd say, obviously these obviously these are covering just one just one just one potential um hue, one potential hue, but I'd imagine that plenty plenty of characters in this particular setting would be utilizing multiple hues um in co in combination. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not to say that it, that's not to say that a single element person can't can't be effective. It's just there there there's going to be some things that they can do and some things that they can't. The whole the whole vari variety versus specificity debate. Yeah. Um. Now within within that I with cre with um creation, the big one that comes to mind is a factory. I could see a factory. I could also see a nursery. Mm -hmm. oh. Of any type, whether it's a an animal nursery or a human nursery. Yeah. Um with with destru with um with destruction, I this might be a bit obvious, but I'm thinking of a of a of, of some war-torn landscape. Like say, like say, a city after a ba after a battle is come and gone, mm -hmm. or a black junkyard. hole, or junkyard, yeah, with mm -hmm. their crushers and everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Plus eight, a ma how many how many um how many ho how many horror scenes how many horror or or action movies have we seen where they do, where the climactic fight is in the, is in a junk is in a junkyard a scra a scrapyard or some sort or some sort of trash heap like that far far too many mm -hmm. um <laughs> one that comes directly off mind is a uh, is is actually deadpool mm -hmm. where they're in that junkyard area for the piece of the fallen shield helicarrier mhm mm um now, when, now, essence, um, that one, essence is go, essence is going to is would be a bit would be a bit of a tricky one. Just I, like a dumbbell could be a muse, a gym can be your euphoria. Oh, oh, Zan, you're gonna you're gonna hate me for this. So if Go. somebody has the essence, if somebody has the gym as their as their euphoria, does that mean that they really are the boss of this gym? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't hate you. That was a good one. <laughs> um. Oh, about that collider. Say again. About that collider. <laughs> He's right with the creation uh with the creation hue again when when you have the the CERN decommissioned key card, now he can actually manifest the particle accelerator. Um 
or or um or the Rome where the or the Rome with or the or the Rome the Roman half life where the residence cascade happened because prepare for unforeseen consequences. That. <laughs> Um, but hey, you remember that scene from the first Resident Evil movie where they're in the uh, the area with the liquor where they're being stored? Of course, your mind goes to the liquor. <laughs> it would work. It would it would work, but I think that's low hanging fruit for you. This if, is true. Um, yeah. As for as for other essence uh, euphorias. Um, a printing mm. press. Yeah. Or the truth is transcribed, mm -hmm. or at least we hope it's the truth. I think that could count for illusion as well, depending depending on the depending on the place. Um, depending on the place and depending on the intent. A lot of uh, a lot of the higher sphere orders, the same muse could be used for for both of a uh, for both sides of the coin. Depending on intent and inspiration. Yes, uh, and church. that is, that is very much by design. And speaking of, speaking of that, um, if someone if someone's euphoria is is a is a empty is an is a big empty church. Like when I say big, I'm talking like those big. I'm talking like those big ass churches in um, cathedral in your in Europe, a full on cathedral. What? How would you? How would um? What? Um, what colors and setup would you say that would you say that they would that they would go with? There are a lot of different hues that could be. Um, of the lower hue alone, uh, that could be earth for a place of sanctuary and safety. That could be air for a place of um, whimsy and spirituality. That could be light for literal, you know, references to God. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be fire for the warmth of the Holy Spirit. There's, li you could literally do any and every hue in there mm -hmm. um, for, a, for a very large cathedral because of how subjective the iconography for places of worship are. Everybody finds something different in them. Um, you could find darkness in there for, for people who want someplace cozy and uh, away from the hustle and bustle of the world. Mm -hmm. Creation and destruction are obvious. Essence is probably the most obvious. Essence and illusion are both the most obvious there. Mm -hmm. The transformation of the truth of the self and, and the exposition of the lies. Um, yeah. yeah, all of it could apply in a large cathedral. So mm -hmm. if anybody's euphoria ends up being a cathedral... You're never going to know what hue it is until they start using their hue. And the th one of the now one one of the reasons that I ask that kind of thing is because when I, when I look at the when I look at the idea of the symposium of life, um, and a approach an approach that uh, an approach that I'm go that I'm going with with this kind of organization is that they've they've been they've been around for a while i'd say i'd say they've pr i'd say they've probably been around since the da since the days of antiquity mm -hmm. um i'd i'd say, in fact if, i'd prob i'd probably go i'd probably go with would you go with the idea that they that they've been around since the since the days of sumerian times or do you think that's too far back because i was thinking either that or um rome um, if I had to be honest, early you would see earliest uh, records within Sumerian text. Um, when you say that they've probably existed since the days of antiquity, I would imagine that they've existed since uh, commonly known history, since they, and of course the necromancers who are are the people they face would have probably been around since anima was first manipulated since people first started using anima of any type the symposium would have had to form very quickly and they likely would not have been called the symposium at first um mm -hmm. frankly because firstly a symposium is a greek word um but their their proto organization would have had to exist 
prior to recorded history in order to continue to keep humanity going without the necromancers completely perverting the natural order and destroying life itself mm -hmm. now take now taking th taking that into the reason why i bring that up is because i'd imagine that pe that people within the symposium literally come from all walks of life of course some, some per one person the person you who you might see who some people might just be the average everyday folk that you see that you see day in and day out. Some might be, um, some might be bit some might be businessmen. Some might be clergymen. Some might some might be, um, a some might be athletes. Some might, some any any potential career that ex that exists in the real world. Um, somebody they might there's the possibility that that, that they might be a member of the symposium on on the side, and because of that, there's plenty of hidden passages th throughout if when it, throughout a given sit throughout a given city if you if you follow me mm -hmm. an e thought yes that might be... <laughs> i went there <laughs> um for all hey, it for works all we, for illusion for all we for all we know them being an e thought might be a might be a cover for the, for the, for to to draw to draw attention off of them actually now that I think about it, that's actually you could do a lot with that. Mm -hmm. I it's hate always, that. it's always darkest beneath the lamp, Doku. Uh, it was supposed to be a joke, but now that I think about it, it actually has some validity. This just means that Belle Delphine is one of the maestros. Has to be. Oh crap! <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> it's so that's all. Oh. It's all it, Doku's fault too. You can blame him for it. So that's what the whole selling bathwater thing was about. Yep, she's the maestro of water. <sighs> God damn. Uh, <laughs> um, now her, again, her, why did I put <laughs> Her euphoria is just a giant bathtub. Speak, <laughs> speaking up, speaking up. Now, getting back to sanity, relatively. <laughs> Instead, now. Obviously, you had you had the you had the ranking or you had the ranking set up with the Gote with the Gote thirteen or and and the like, but in, instead of instead of instead of that particular setup of ranking, I am considering having a setup where there are cert where there are certain micro organizations, almost almost like um, I get the two the two anal the two analogies that I can that I can think of to what to what I'm going with. One is the one is the um. Is the or is the um, is the divisions of ma of magic knights in Black Clover, and the other is the chapters of um Space Marines in 40k. Neither of those sound. <laughs> uh, um, especially not 40k. The for the latter might the latter might be a bit of a stretch, but the the idea is that these fa that these factions tend to th tend to theme themselves around a around a certain type of expression, a certain type of philosophy, etc. Even though they're technically all using the same type of powers. Emperor of Actually, mankind as maestro of essence, with the golden throne being his muse. Actually, did you guys remember uh, what was the name of the council from Kakaishi? Was it the Shadow Council? think it's been a while since kakaishi it kind of reminds me of that setup where they're all part of a separate group but they are well they're, they're a conglomerate of organizations that make up a, a sort of oligarchy i guess would be a proper term yeah the or um the organization the organization as a whole is still the symposium but when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to these micro um, groups, I'd um, what sh what should we call them in a way that would still fit? I was I was thinking I keep I was thinking discipline, but but I'm kind of fifty fifty on that one. Hmm. Forums or troops could work. Well, the reason forums is because a symposium was was a could be a grouping of forums, different literal Roman forums coming together in one giant discussion group so if we're going to continue with the with the with the theming of symposium the smaller splinter groups are all different forums mm -hmm. now 
give I'd and I'd say I'd say that the um I'd say that whoever's the leader of of one of these forums is is the does have the does have the title of maestro. So we would have 10 forums with 10 maestros. Um we don't necessarily have I wasn't I wasn't planning on ha on having e on having each for on each um, I wasn't planning on having each forum be re be represented for e for each um for each hue especially mm -hmm. especially since especially since that's going to cause problems with the greater hues. Okay. Um I can see what you're doing then. I get it. The the approach the approach that I'm go that I'm go that I'm going with instead is that e is that each has a different um a different a different philosophy a different doctrine much in the same way that say um squad squad 11 in the gote 13 was the was the was the um battle obsessed people <laughs> or like oh, squad 12 was the fucking idiot mad scientist group yeah i guess if you wanted to be a little more complicated with it and keep uh maestro as more of a a uh, measure of proficiency, you could say whoever the leader of the forum is would be a... I don't want to go with speaker, but like a conductor. Where it's like, one's a title, the other's a rank. Mm. I'm f what, do you, what do you think, Zan? Um, that sounds pretty... We could call them conductors, yeah. And I'm trying to think of a better word, but I just can't think of anything at the moment. Um, I mean, you could, you could really go either, uh, internet culture or even, you know, the, uh, <laughs> call them moderators, but <laughs> no. nobody wants to work under Jannies. Nah, I'm go No, I'm going with conductor. Because... A train has a train has a conductor and a and a band has a conductor. So, it's ver it's versatile enough for us. Um. I also wouldn't be surprised if, when it comes to forums, we could split these into two types: open and closed. Closed forums tend to have tend to have the very secrets, the classical secret society kind of attitude, whereas open ones are um. Are more are more publicly known in in some in some form or fashion. Even even if even if the thing that they're known as is just a front, like say, a um, say you have say you have a say you have a um, a news a um newspaper publication that that um, that is that is used as a front for for a get for a symposium forum. But that th could work, yeah, and it'd be yeah. the way that they 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 help to interact with the wider world because mm -hmm. every every secret group that guards the world still has to have a front for the world yeah well, that would also help with uh where if something's invite only or if one is uh hey we have this problem like we need to go take care of it now like just put together a group of people like it could have it could add versatility to it not to mention you could use it as a as a cover um to compare it to a really good movie that i like starring jason statham uh, where he's the mechanic. Mm -hmm. In the same way, let's say not all the virtuosos are at symposium headquarters or even near a forum office. Um, they, one of these fronts, whether it be for, in this example, the newspaper, uh, puts out a series of help wanted ads. But these help wanted ads are coded. They're, they're meant to attract the other virtuosos mm -hmm. so that they can come in and assist with a mission. Yeah. Um, and give now given that given that kind given that kind of setup, um, when we when we did the mag when we did the magical shonen idea, we um we ended up establishing a a a bit a bit of a a bit of a protagonist approach where um where we can where we kind of ended up doing our own spin on pr on the prince and pauper, ex except 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 they're except they're both. They're both very good friends. Um, because we didn't want it. We didn't want to do the whole rival. We didn't want to do the rival character in the traditional sense. Um, I would. The with a, a common approach that we that that ends up happening with these kind of series is we have somebody, 
Um, we have one. We have one person who's essentially the, essentially our surrogate, who can, who ends up developing powers, but is com but is a complete noob to this um to this new to this world that they've stumbled into, and then you have the uh, then you have on the other other side of the equation people who the someone who is more, is more is seen as more of an expert and more of their some somewhat mentor figure er, early on. Um. Now we're going back into Jujutsu Kaisen there with uh, Gojo Sat Satoru Gojo and uh, and Itadori. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a well worn motif, and I don't see a reason to not to not do that. Um, what would the only go ahead. Uh, the only the only addition I would like to make is um, much like Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, Itadori Yuji, Itadori Yuji is our is our hapless guy who's never been around this stuff in his life and gets thrust into it. But he's still not only does he have the the use the the expert uh, mentor mm -hmm. or in this case expert mentors counting Nanami and everybody else. Um, he has people who are considered his peers that are also being mentored by the same mentor. Um, I think that we should incorporate elements of that since we have so many hues to explore. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's my suggestion there. All right, I got gotcha. you. Um, now, give now, given that if we if we're t for for our theoretical protagonist in this case, um, I don't I. I don't like the idea that they're complete that they're completely unskilled. I've never been a f I've never been a fan of that. So I'd probably have it that I'd probably have it that they have some degree of re of real world skill or, or 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 the like before they got thrust into this kind of situation. Um but what what sort of what sort of sk what sort of skill would you have would you have them in the would you have them go with for the protagonist and what sort and what sort of um what sort of what sort of hue what sort of hue combination and um mute and muse would you go with when they become a virtuoso what's your idea doku mm cuz i've got a very a very specific idea in mind but i want to hear some others first now is this an actual idea or is this or is this another or is or is this you or is this another meme no this is this is an actual idea if it were another meme, I would already be giggling. Mm -hmm. Should know that by um, now. So what type? Hmm. This is actually. There's a lot of different ways to go about this. So, so, I'm I'm thinking this. The guy isn't the traditional artiste. He isn't some sort of sculptor or painter. He isn't a. Uh, a composer, he isn't something along those lines. No, he's an architect. He's an architect, so he draws very precise schematics and ideas for for large buildings, and the engineers take care of the rest in the back background to make sure that those buildings can be built to specification. Um, as such, I believe his muse is going to be uh, uh, a surveyor's scope, something an architect would need to use to get the proper sight lines for their for their buildings and then draw stuff up, etc. Um, and this also means his hue would actually be a greater hue of creation. And and then if he ever gets a euphoria, I'm thinking that it would actually be a large scale construction site. To, to put it all on top, to, he's not unskilled. He's actually quite he's actually quite good. He's one of the better architects in whatever area he's in, mm -hmm. and he's in his late twenties, nearly his thirties. Probably, um, just to throw on some 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 more of the seinen tropes because I think we need more seinen heroes. Um, he probably has the the ruffled collar, un uh, unkept tie situation going on. Um, and uh, maybe even smokes. Five o'clock shadow. For for whatever reason, I keep th I keep thinking of Rio Saiba from City Hunter. 
<laughs> not exactly what I was going for, but I can see it. Also, um, I was <laughs> also when I um when I ended up I ended up putting Surveyor's Scope into um into go into Google Image Search, and one of the images I got was that was this was this um card for MTG that I'm gonna put in the council. <laughs> Magic the Gathering card, of course. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that is not at all what I'm talking about. Yeah, I knew game. I knew what you were talking about. I just thought it was funny, but um, when it comes to a when it comes to a surveyor's sco scope, I'm guessing he I'm guessing he has a portable one. He's not bringing the he's not bringing the big ass thing with the tri with the tri the um, tripod. Yes, a smaller one. Um. When I was, when I, the person I was thinking of, to be honest, uh, when I was describing him, um, is, uh, Kaji, Evangelion. I, I can go, mm. I can go with that. Um, now when, now, when it comes to, when it comes to his particular, um, an anima, would it, is it a case where he's, he's able to, He's able to um he's able to assem assemble, as you you said you said that his his one his was creation so he's probably able to as assemble assemble whatever whatever he's channeling it with, through his anima into reality. Yeah, it, it, it's going to take. He's going to use what he knows. Mm -hmm. He's an architect, and so this is a chance for him to create the buildings he's always wanted to create or create whatever. Without the restrictions of the engineers on his on his ask, he no longer needs to wait for things to be drawn up and and then for the engineers to go. No, we have to redo this, this, and this in this particular fashion. Otherwise, load bearing walls and all that dumb stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, he now can have the freedom to explore how he can create what he's always wanted to create without the need for these endless waiting times. Um, so it's, it's definitely a case of him. I'm going to assemble what I need very quickly. And some of it's going to be very function over form. Oh, I, you know, this, this particular Euclid is making it so none of the, you know, we, these people can't build, can't keep their buildings in their village because, uh, he, he makes sinkholes in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. retaining walls because, it works. Form a function over form. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you, know, other... you could you could have you could have the you could have the gag of him of him getting of him running away while getting while getting chased while getting chased by Euclid, and um him and him deciding him deciding wait they're running on the ground, um pl apply a bit of magic and then all of a sudden manhole. <laughs> exactly, you know something that you know you get your your visual gags that mm -hmm. way every so often. Um, you'll also get a lot of good sakuga out of it. You'll get a fuck ton of good sakuga yeah. out of it. Now, um, when it comes, instead of using multiple mentors, I'm I'm more in I'm more in line with using just one. Um, all in favor of Pennywise the Clown being his mentor? Say I. <laughs> oh God. I want to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> Want in one hand and shit in the other, monk. Hmm. And... So if that's what you're going with, I would say... This... Character is not anybody who's particularly talented at anything, but has an appreciation for something, so... It, let's say they have an appreciation for music, but can't play an instrument, so their muse would be something like a Walkman or a pair of headphones, or if they're Someone who likes reading, it could be a pair of reading glasses. I'm willing to go with the reading glasses one, one more because I think I think that's that's a bit more that's a bit that's a bit more a bit more a bit more apropos. I'm think I'm thinking that they pr that their day job is probably that of say a um say a a um I was gonna I was gonna go with a a museum curator or an or an art critic. That would work. And then whatever the expansion would be would have to be related to the job. Like so, again, if we're going uh, reading glasses, a person likes person likes books. It could be, you know, the mentor would obviously be like an author or 
a book critic of some sort, and then the expansion would be like a library. Yeah. A library the size of Buckingham Palace. Mm-hmm. Um. I've always imagined libraries at that size just as a as a great like backdrop to some sort of you've been summoned to the Akashic Records. Oh. And um, a lot of books. Um Look, we are we already ha we already have a fill up here in the watch. <laughs> because the planet's bookshelves are pretty much the the Akashic records. Let's not even kid ourselves. Oh, I know. But give, given the, given that I'm get I'm I'm get I'm get I'm guessing that I'm guessing that it it would be it would be because the the approach that I'm when it comes to when it comes to these two particular types of um of ca of characters um the thing the thing is uh, the thing is a architect and and, and a and a art critic would would ha would have the appearance of coming of coming from two different worlds so so what what sort of euclid would you would you set up to br to bring these two together hmm Well, if it's a construction site, a burnt down library would be the easiest. Like, so they're trying to rebuild it, but they can't. Keeps burning down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go a little more esoteric about it. Um, <clears throat> the Euclid is creating the worst movie backstages. Are you? Th so are you've you got the, the of... fantasy. You've got the fantasy and screenwriting element for the off for the book for the book critic slash slash uh, librarian, I guess, and then you've got the architecture side for the architect. Not to mention, it gives a little bit of a monster of the week vibe too. I um I keep get I keep getting flashbacks to all the stories that happened behind the scenes with the Exorcist. Ha. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's definitely a Euclid's playground. <laughs> or the uh, tragedies of the poltergeist movies. Yeah, yeah. That's um, that's a rabbit hole I don't feel like going down anytime soon. The Euclid infected them. Nobody knew. Mm -hmm. But oh. essentially, that 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 was my idea. It's a you know, you've got the 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 screenwriting and the fantastic and all of that fun stuff for the uh, for the book critic, for the person who's who's into the the authorhood and the and the fantasy, and then you've got the most what the hell is this? How did you even build that? It's there's nothing, you know, there's no aesthetic pleasure to it, and there's not even a functional pleasure to it uh, that a, that an architect looking at this this set from the minds of Nyarlathotep, whatever you want to oh. call it. Oh god, the Disney Film Studio sets are all fucking Euclid zones. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's some that's something I could that's something I could go with cuz when it comes to I'd say I'd say that the that um when it comes to this when it comes to this particular um the, the our particular mentor person, they there's probably two there's probably um two jobs that they have. The the um the critic, the critic parts is one aspect, but they probably also have a front of be of being a, um, of being an old school journalist. So I could I could see I could I could see it where our protagonist was was hired to was hired to help out with some with um but with the built with the building of a of a of a um, film set and. Our ment and our mentor is is there as a journalist co covering the whole thing. Mm -hmm. When I when I say old and of course when I say old school journalist, I'm talking I'm talking the on the the on the ground report the on the ground beat reporter kind of thing. On the ground beat reporter with a tiny uh, flip spiral notebook, mm -hmm. the size of what is now a, a smartphone in modern day and age. Yeah. Um, and 
I could, and because because of the different worlds that they come from, with with I could see um, I could see these I could see these two having having a lot of head butting over the value of aesthetic. Is one of them as an architect is is gonna be is gonna be focused more on the practicality of things. Yep, he's he's always. He's always liked to make things as pretty as he can, but remember, the first thing a building has to be is functional. Mm -hmm. Whereas the men the mentor is is all a, is all about the, is all about the aesthetic of things, and because of that, it's not that it's not that they hate each other. It's that when it comes to this sort of debate, they agree they um they agree that one of them is wrong. If the building cannot stand, then he is wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that 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 would be Protag Kuhn's uh, uh, mindset. If whatever building you're proposing cannot stand, then you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, mentor Mister Mentor is going to be like, but with your powers, it can stand in spite of not having the required bits. Which, <laughs> um, now when now um, because of because when it come when now I'd pro I probably have it that the mentor is already someone who's in a fo in a forum. Um, I'm debating about whether or not whether or not when someone be when someone joins the symposium that they have to be a, that they are assigned a forum or if there's some people who go freelance. Uh, imagine that there would be freelancers. Um. Especially, you know, newer people, because the symposium, being a symposium of life, full of people who are following their own artistic value, mm -hmm. is going to inherently value uh, freedom of choice. They're going to value being able to choose the path you want to take, rather than force you to choose a path as soon as possible. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking... So, one thing I am thinking of of going with is that uh, is that there are some people the people who are ref who are referred to as freelancers are those who have who have um who have been who have cho who have chosen to reject and reject any forum and go and go completely solo and because of that while that while it does have some benefits of of not having to answer to a whole lot of a whole lot of people there's also the fact that it that it's hard for them to get support. Yeah, and uh, I imagine that there's actually, uh, while not a forum, I would think of it more as a primer of sorts. A, a group of people who are there to at least help anyone new to the symposium just to understand you know, the organization, uh, it's, uh, the hierarchy, how forums work, uh, if you want to look for a forum, how the best way to go about it is, the list of all the forums, etc., you know what their what their particular goals are, and of course the list of the private forums just says, yeah, these are private forums. You'll need to ask them in person. Um, but at at that point, it's it's also going to have you know general bylaws and rules, and then hey, is there anything else you need to know about? Kind of a if I had to boil it down, it's like um, Guild Canard in .dot hack to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think that would that there'd be a group like that. They wouldn't necessarily be a forum in and of themselves, but more a, a um, just a, pr a priming organization within the symposium to help people understand how the symposium works, and also help to you know give them a sense of of, of safety and of uh, help helpfulness. Um, and given given that. Would, would, would um, would the would our mentor character in this? Be, would you say that they? Would you say that they would be that they would be, um, that they that they would be a freelancer, or would they be, or would they be in a forum? Uh, I think that's uh that's on you, Doku. You're the one who came up with our mentor character here. Hmm. With this one in particular, I'd say probably in a forum. Um. 
and gi given the fact that they given the fact that they're uh, that they're a journalist i'd i'd go with the fact i'd go with the idea that they're a um o that they're in an open forum one of the ones with a public facing uh side to them yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you're going to be writing at least at least column pieces or uh, column pieces are doing something it wouldn't really make sense that you'd be in a working in the background you'd definitely be more in the forefront yeah um also, it also it allows allows for a bit of comedy when he when when the protagonist has to pretend to be the mentor's assistant, gritting his teeth <laughs> every step of the way. Yeah, ba basic basically have basically having to get the mentor coffee, and I haven't had to do this since I was an underwriter. <laughs> um, I I, I will I will know. I will note that when it that um for for whatever for whatever reason um I keep I keep thinking that the mentor in I, the mentor in this case is a woman. I don't know why. No, that actually would make sense. Um. I depending on what it is, and if we're talking uh if we're still going with the idea of uh, books and reading and everything, that is, uh, book critics tend tend to be a more female dominated space. Um. Plus, the, I plus I I will I will admit that one one particular um one particular rela one particular relationship that that can that can provide a good can provide a good framework. And I I may end up changing my mind on this when I event when I eventually do watch Jujutsu Kaisen, is um Ichigo and Rukia in Bleach. Yeah, you'll when you when you end up watching Jujutsu. <laughs> uh, I'm not getting into that. No spoilers for you, Monk. Um, I, I appreciate your restraint. I'm just laughing because. Oh, now I'm sad again because I thought of other things. Thanks, Monk. But it, um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, ultimately, Mister, I'm a successful architect. How dare you try and push me around? You know, you know. Why do I have to pretend to be your assistant? Why can't I just be someone you're interviewing? Mm -hmm. We're going to have that particular comedic spat. And we all know it's going to be... And they're both going to be petty about it because they're both very successful people in their own right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, as far... Now, as far as, as far as the... As far as, far as the... Um, as far as the forum... Um, I'm, th I'm thinking... I'm thinking that the name of the for... The, the name of the forum should just be the Gazette. Yeah, it works. Makes, makes sense. It works. Um, if we need, if we need to have a, if we need to have a, if we go, if we are going with the rival cliche, I feel that a, I feel that a rival character should be, should be a member of a closed forum. Member of a closed forum, and if he's going to be a rival character, he's the. Uh, Demolitions expert for deconstruction. So, so I'm get so I'm guessing that I'm guessing get, given that that his his particular hues are dis, are destruction and um, fire. Could be, yeah, definitely destruction to face down uh, MC's creation, mm -hmm. but uh, also. A little bit more of a uh, of a of a combative personality. Mm -hmm. um, what takes? It? Go ahead. I was gonna say takes uh, pretty great pleasure in both his real life, where he's you know part of a deconstruction firm, where he gets to use things like controlled demo charges and chemical anchors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, in order to tear down buildings and such. Yeah. 
but also takes a of a, 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 a very lunatic fringe type of pleasure in destroying Euclids as well. Yeah, I I could see I could see him I could see him having the attitude of of um of collateral collateral damage is is a um is a tax write off. Collateral damage just means my company gets to come in and clean up what's left. Mm-hmm. And beca- <laughs> because of the be- because of the, um because of the fact that he that he's from a closed forum, I get the feeling that um that it's a fa- that it's a family business kind of thing. Like his pe- he, one of his pe- that his his fa- his father his father did this did this whole did this whole demo business thing. His grandfather did this whole demo business thing, and so on. That um, and the fact that if I had to make the uh, particular decision here, uh, I would say that he uh, he also uh, the the forum isn't just his isn't just a, his family business, but it's a it's a closed forum of primarily deconstruction hue. Uh, uh, you know, members of the of the symposium that are um, of the opinion that uh, the only good Euclid is one that has been, to the very core, been destroyed. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, I do think we need to establish a formula when it comes to Euclid encounters. Now, well, the approach the approach that the approach that I'm go- that I'm going with is that. A that the O part is the anchor. It's essentially it's essentially their equivalent to a muse. Yeah. Um, but long- unlike unlike a muse, rather than it being used by someone who's already there, it is used to bring something there. Yeah. At first, at first, that something is just the dread feeling, and wi- and either wi- either with time or or when or if the O part feels feels like it's being sufficiently threatened. The process is accelerated to try and to try and bring the Euclid in, Euclid into reality. Mm-hmm. The key, the key thing the I'd I'd say that the key thing is um the is that the um the O part the O part has to still be fa- has to still be found and destroyed. It could the Euclid could probably manifest itself tempor- temporarily for some for some mi- for some minor fights. But it, but it's not going to be at its strong. It's not going to be at its strongest, and also its most vulnerable, until 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 it's conf- until it's confronted. Yeah, but uh, the confrontation with the O part also means the manifestation of a labyrinth, mm-hmm. and uh, and then of course the re- the revelation of the of the Euclid's true form. Yeah. Now, um, I want to float something by you here, since we do have you know. Uh, the the Gressers here that are the higher ups. I assume the Gressers can already manifest without an O part. Yeah the the approach the approach that I the approach that I'm going with with the Gressers is that they is that these are these are individuals whose whose art ended up ended up crossing an, ended up crossing a natural a natural line um, like they essentially doing transgressive art the the Slanesh, st- the Slanesh style artists, if you if you will. Oh God! Don't remind me of that novel, please. Um, that's that's as far as I'm going to go with that. But the um the point, or or they they created they created some sort of art that that, that just transgressed. Yes. And the and they were they were reject they were rejected to the point to the point where they where um where them being around nature, um, is. And is and that is anathema to them, and that that's why they ended up leaving this world. Okay. Um, then hey guys, with that, I just, go ahead. I just built into monkey lava. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm talking um, about transgressive art, I should note that I'm that um stuff that I'm thinking of it. Pretty much the majority of the films during the during the um, during the Slavic Black Wave would count. 
Yeah. Especially, especially sweet movie. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Um. So with that in mind, that the, that the Gressers are previously uh, virtuosos. It sounds like that. Yes. They were. Pro- that they, pro- they were probably. They were probably maestros. Uh huh. Previously maestros who transgressed. Mm-hmm. Um, in that respect, would you say that one of the methods of accelerating the manifestation of a Euclid would be to bind an O part to a potential unawakened virtuoso? Yes. Mm. Gotta love it. Now we're getting closer to Madoka Magica every day. Um. Oh. The reason the reason why the reason why I like that the reason why I like that approach is be, is because of the because of the fact that through the the the, str- the strengthening the strengthening process is 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 generating that is is that um feeling and if they can if they can generate that in one in one per, in one person and go, and go through it directly rather than taking rather than taking bits and pieces from from people that pass by a given area it's going. It's going to be a much more accelerated process, but possibly a much more dangerous um, process. And unstable, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I can see. I'm. I'm already having some ideas on how we have some mid-season villains that are uh, that are unstable and possibly caused by an O part fusing with an unawakened virtuoso who is forcibly awakened by them. But that's neither here nor there. In in the, in that kind of in that kind of thing, they'd probably think that they've that they've awakened to some sort of gift when when really they when really they haven't. They haven't, and in fact, they their uh, very life hangs in the balance. Um, with that kind of thing in mind, with with Gressers, one of the other things that I'm thinking of is that they have their. I'm not going to I'm not going to list them. He, I'm not going to list them here, but I have the idea that they have their own set of, that they have their own set of hues that are essentially twisted versions of um of the of the greater and lesser hues basically um, all necromantic versions of the hues yeah i'd s- you're you're familiar with if since you're familiar with exalted you'll pro- you i am drawing on the relationship between so, between solars and um, abyssals yeah, yeah and abyssals yep with how the ca- the casts for both are opposites of each other Yes, I get I get what you're doing. I'm mm-hmm. picking up what you're putting down. That's the that's the approach that I'm that I'm kind of go, that I'm kind of going with this. Okay. Um. And. But what? But um. The key the key thing is that what once and once an O, a O, a um a O part in in some regards could be could be considered. Akin to a um, a se- ah, it could it could an o a um o, it could be considered akin to a phylactery for a lich. You just dis- if you destroy if you destroy the if you destroy the o part then the then the means for the Euclid to manifest is gone. Yeah. Now they now they could still they could still they could still try and create and they could still try and create a another O part could could still make could still make their appearance but that but that particular one is done and also when it com- when it comes to when it comes to creating a when it comes to the idea of um, if a muse is destroyed that d- that doesn't that doesn't mean that they that a virtuoso just becomes a normal human. They just yeah. have to pr- either reforge or discover a new muse. Yeah. Um. And in in this regard, you could pro- you could probably have it that the um surve- that the the original surveyor scope that our protagonist has mm-hmm. wa- was um was a hand me down, and midway through the season, he ends up making a new one. That'd be nice. Um. Which leads to the discovery of his euphoria. Yeah. Um. Would you have would you have it that creation is his only hue, or would you ha- would you have it that he's that he's able to mix in others? 
Um, I would say that creation is his initial hue. I don't think that it would be his only hue in the end. But I don't think that he would have a, another hue until his first muse breaks. Mm -hmm. what, what, I think, would that, uh, what would that secondary hue be? Um... I think it would be light. It sounds a little cliche because, you know, main character and all. But he, he, he has the creation hue, and then I think he would have the light hue uh, partly as sort of a, um, a eureka moment. The reason his euphoria and the new surveyor scope all work is because he does have that eureka moment, and that's mm -hmm. why the light uh, comes to him as his second hue. I I can I can certain I can certainly go with that. Um and of co of course like we mentioned his euphoria is is a is a active is a active construction site. And I wouldn't be surprised if um if with if within that euphoria there there are essentially and for all intents and purposes NPCs that are that are doing that are operating all the equipment that's seen. That yeah, he, that he can that he can that he can direct to to um do attacks or defense. Yeah, and they obviously build way way faster than a than any normal construction crew would. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as far as as far as the when it comes to the when it comes to the rival, give, given how he seems to enjoy. Be beating the shit out of Euclid's. I wouldn't. I know some people would be tempted to say that this is somebody who sounds like a villain in the making. That he's that he's one bad day away from becoming a transgressor. I'm not going that route. No, he's he's just. It's just that they're very dead set in the fact that uh, all of these things need to die. Period. And by by any by not any means necessary by every means necessary. Yes. But he, but he is not. But he is. But the I'd say I'd say if I'd say if I can make one I say if I can make one analogy, it's the it's the whole thing when the le in I know you've had your issues with Hiroaka lately, but I want to bring up something from it from its early run, and that is when it when the, when they did the whole thing about whether or not ba whether or not Bakugo would actually join the League of Villains. And he's like, "Fuck no! I, I, the only I need to be better than all my, yeah." Mm -hmm. Um, that's the that's the approach I I wanted to go with. That the that the, these are people who can cer certainly aggressive, certainly arrogant, certainly a lot of certainly a lot of personality flaws, but they're not idiots. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm not falling into the Sasuke trap, <laughs> which is good. Um, but the, but I I would I would say that, but there there is one other cliche that I that I have to wonder if we, if we should if we should address if we should address. <laughs> should Which one's we, that? Should we have a tournament arc? Uh no 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 <laughs> nah no need for a tournament arc. All all right, there there are. I will admit that there are way there are ways I could see it happening, given how it, given how it's all, given how art is the main theme. Um. But. Uh, but I can I can I but as I think about it more and more, it ju it just wouldn't fit. The. Mm -hmm. Now, do, doing the doing the um, doing the pagoda doing the pagoda floors formula that um, Yu Yu Hakusho used used quite often, that's a bit more likely. I mean, you could always have a you could always have an aspect of the uh, game where the protagonist and the rival are trying to see who can destroy Euclid first or who can destroy how many Euclids. Like a personal a personal competition between the two that'd make a little more sense. If if we're going if we're going by that approach, I'd pro I'd probably ha I'd probably have it that um that in doing that in doing that in doing that kind of thing, um set setting up essentially bait. 
um, things get out of hand. By that, by no, that, I, I mean, by that, I mean a a the the approach was the approach was just to deal with low tier Euclids, but then a bigger tier one comes in. Mm -hmm. or, or, or and at the end of it, a single transgressor takes notice of takes notice of the two of them. Doesn't do anything. You just just see, just sees them. Well, Matt. That has been done in a a lot of different uh, anime where normally you wouldn't take notice of something, but then yeah, you're still a you're still a noob, but you show great promise. Well, that catches the attention of you know a more big bad, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna start focusing on these two, and if I can't corrupt them, I'm gonna try to kill them. Yeah, I know I've referenced Bleach a handful of a handful of times in this, and I'm gonna reference it again. The thing that comes to mind with this was or was um or do you um, setting setting up hollow bait to try to try and to try and see who can who can take out more hollows, and 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 they and, and they inadvertently end up inviting a met a low tier menos into the into the whole affair. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, that's actually that's actually a good analogy. Which when that gets beaten back, that that's what ends up causing the chain of events to um. To, that would that would set up the whole Soul Society arc. Um, but the re the the with this with this kind with this kind of setup, I'm go I'm I am going with the idea of of a uh, of a Euclid that's ju that's just a little bit more powerful. And I I will note as we've kind of developed this, there's um there's one an there's one anime that I've been subconsciously taking notes from and didn't realize it. Are any of you familiar with Mononoke? Yeah. Not Mononoke Hime, Mononoke, the yeah. spin-off to Ayakashi. Oh, I know the name, but I'm drawing a blank. So <laughs> It was it was a um, it was a um, a supernatural mystery s series that that went on f that got one se that got one season. Honestly, didn't need more than that. Um, about a about a traveling medicine seller who doesn't have a name. He's just referred to as the medicine seller. Who yep, and he uh, it's it's only twelve episodes. Mm -hmm. I know. Yep. Who um. Would who would hunt down Ayakashi after learning their form, truth, and regret? I feel like I know what you're talking about, but if if I watched it, I don't remember it. But it, the reason why I point that out is we've is we've we can't we are kind of we kind of have a bit of a investigatory sub theme within the, within this hypothetical series. Hmm. Since since part since part of the since part of the formula is is trying is trying to fig is trying to figure out what and where what and where the O part is. Also through this kind of thing, they somebody can make a joke about is the crystal skull an O part? No, we just told everybody it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little t a little tongue in cheek get a little tongue in cheek jab to to that particular um. Thing. Um, oh goodness! But I would I would say that the that the that w within the within that kind of setup. So we've we've had the introduction. We've had the we've had the upgrade moments. Um. We we did mention that the ment that the mentors um the me the mentors the mentors um euphoria is a library but what but what sort of effects would it would it be would it be a case where they could re where they could read up on read up on certain skills and be able to use them te temporarily I was think hmm. That could be one aspect aspect of it. I was thinking more of, uh, but basically, it would be uh, 
essence and illusion because both would be very at home in a library but as far as like imparting skills i had I guess it really depends. Uh, that could technically be an upgrade arc in an arc in and of itself. Although, like learning since, learning what is where in the library. Although, since since you meant since you mentioned you mentioned you mentioned essence and and illusion as as the mentor's hues. The mm -hmm. the vibe the vibe that the vibe that I'm getting is that. They are is that they were able to you they're able to is that they're able to utilize um um essence to to um to to essentially essentially respect themselves so they might they might be they might be we've made we made the we made the jokes about about s about a essence user who's who's a gym rat what if we what if we went full what if we went all, all ahead that the um that the that this particular um this particular mentor um, look looks to be looks to be a sh a short unathletic type, but when utilizing their powers, they um they could prob they could probably they could probably de they could probably deadlift the mountain. And yeah, no, I I don't see why that wouldn't work. Is I will admit I'm a bit of a sucker for the motif of some of someone who someone who lo who uh, doesn't look all that strong but is but is mo but is actually actually has monster strength. Mm -hmm. And I, f I feel like I feel like this would be that would be a good way to um represent represent it. And go and going fur going further um their euphoria would al would allow them to um Make, essentially essentially make st make um some aspect of stories real yeah that that would work very well as a concept mm -hmm. considering what we're going with um because that, that works well with the illusion part too that and you that and you can easily have the gag of the pen is mightier than the sword <laughs> yeah Um, and th that's the that's that's the uh, so um because because of that I'd imagine that in their euphoria they're able to they're able to create um create constructs that are representative of char of characters throughout stories so right in the middle of it you might you you might see them getting back getting backup help from say the monkey king. Mm hmm. I guess really what you could say is their euphoria is basically you are living within that that the mentor's story. Like they are essentially the god of that little pocket world. Hmm. More that's ki that's kind of that's kind of what we've been leaning to with the whole you system of a euphoria. Yeah, the reality marbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I th but um I think I think with I think with this kind of setup we do have a proper form we do have a proper format. Um, I I will ad I will admit that if I were to if I were to steal an opening theme the smart the smart ass thing would be to use would be to use life is showtime from Common Rider Wizard but I don't like that as an opening theme so I'm not doing that. Hmm. Um. Now, if there's if there's any song that I would use as an opening theme, it's probably "Kings for a Day" from T from TMG. Um, that's what that's one that's one possibility. But I do th I do think with what's set up here, we do have en we do have enough room for a th for a set for a um a single season setup, and obviously more seasons would probably deal with cons would probably deal with um. Confronting gre confronting aggressors and getting a better understanding of how to manipulate a euphoria. Because I'd say one dr one drawback that that should probably be done with the euphoria to make sure it's n make sure it's not too powerful is time. I.e. the um the the um a person's anima has a much has a much bigger strain when you when using something as broad as a euphoria versus using just a muse. Mm hmm Just like when uh just like when um
sorry, brain brain stopped there for a minute. Uh, just like when he took the reality marble from Archer in Unlimited Blade Works, and it uh, it put a lot of strain on him too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, because the reality reality does not like to be messed with, and it will reco and it will recoil. Mm-hmm. But with but with all with all that said, I think we've I think we've got a a fairly good setup, and I will and this will this is not going to be the last time this month that we do that we do this kind of theory crafting bullshit. Considering that next week we ha- we have. Oh, next next week I have to ask the question: Do you even pose? Yeah. <clears throat> um, and of course, oh, there's I, there, I do have a handful that. of I do have a handful of interviews, and hopefully, unless unless um unless the sky falls on us, there will be another episode of the Valley of the Judged on fr- on this Friday, and of of course of course I've I've got a I've got some. Um, I've actually I've actually got an interview a, an interview a day for for that for that particular um week. Um but in the me- but until then on behalf of the good brothers present and not present my name is Mildra I am your gaming monk and join the watch. <laughs>